Hello, my name is Stephen Mayu, and in this video series, I'm going to show you how to build a RESTful API using Express and uh, Node.js. Okay, in the last video, I showed you um, where to... Uh, I, I didn't show you how to install Node.js and uh, NPM, but I showed you, um, you know, uh, where, where to download the files and, uh, and the documentation to, um, to, to get it, you know, installed on your computer. Um, I've never installed it on a Windows machine before, but uh, I've, I've been reading through the docs and, and it seems pretty straightforward. Um, hopefully, you haven't had any problems doing that and uh, and uh, well we can get started with the rest of the lesson okay so um, to to get started I'm gonna close this because I don't need that and I'm gonna close that too all right sorry to get started um, we're gonna actually um, install via npm a, uh, a package a package that's gonna um, uh, Create some boilerplate uh, code for us so that we can, you know, really, you know, uh, you know, get to work, you know, super, super fast. And uh, I'm going to try to uh, make this bigger here. One second. Okay, there we go. Blew that up. I think you can see that. That's much, much, much better. Okay, let me minimize that. All right. So, uh, in your computer, all right. I want you to type this. I want you to type npm install dash g okay uh, this dash g it means install it globally okay um, for some npm packages you only want to install them you know locally for one particular project uh, other things um, i mean uh, the their tools and and you want to make them available throughout your entire computer so we're going to install it with the dash g command that means global and i want you to type this express dash generator okay press enter run that command if for some reason uh, this does not work uh, you, and you get a bunch of you know nasty errors don't freak out don't sweat it um, it's probably uh, some kind of a uh, issue with your permissions um, and in order to remedy that all you have to do is type in sudo npm and uh, I already have it installed on my computer, so I'm not going to run that command. But um, once you uh, once you run this, then you will have this npm package called Express Generator on your computer. Okay, so uh, I'm going to uh, go into a uh, new project. Okay, um, let's see. All right, and I'm going to create a new project with the Express Generator. All right, and this is going to uh, give us some boilerplate code so we can start coding really, really fast. All right, so I'm going to say Express, and I'm going to call this project um, My Time Service. Okay, so in your terminal, after you have finished installing Express Generator, run this command express and then a space and then give your project a title uh, in this case i'm calling it my time service and then run that okay so uh i'll show you right here in the directory okay ba -ba 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 -ba. where is it media projects you probably found it before i did not media projects node projects where is it Oh, there it is, right in front of me. All right, so uh, you can see here, if you go to your folder, it uh, running that command, create this folder called My Time Service, and it create all these other you know files and subdirectories and stuff like that too. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's actually go into that folder. So cd My Time Service, and let's open it up in our text editor. Okay, give it a second. Cool. Okay, so with that one command that uh, express my time service, like it created all of these folders and all of these files for us, which is pretty darn cool. Okay, and uh, I want to show you a couple of things here. Uh, first, the, the most important thing um, is, is this file here. It's called package.json. And uh, these are these are you know um, 
uh, you know, just different, you know, information uh, and uh, um, you know, different fields about the project that you're working on. Ours is, um, you know, quite uh, bare. It doesn't have too much, but this is an important uh, area to look at right here. And I'm sorry, I'm going to try to blow this up for you guys so that you can see this more easily. Increase font size. Okay. Okay, so you can see right here we have uh, these dependencies. Well, they're not uh, installed yet, but these are some packages that we're going to eventually install from the NPM website. And uh, when you're you know, creating a, a full-stack JavaScript project, um, it, and you're going to put all of your dependencies right here. So these are the names of the dependencies. we got body parser, cookie parser, debug, express. Okay, that's the web framework that we're going to use. Uh, Jade, Morgan, and Surf Avicon. And then to the right, we have the version numbers of each of these. Um, we're not going to use, you know, all of these. And, um, and you know, um, you know we're, we're going to uninstall some of them in just a moment. But uh, anytime you, um, you know, you clone, you fork and clone a project, or you, you, um, you run this boilerplate, something like that, it's not going to work uh, until you install these dependencies locally. So uh, right now I'm in my project uh, root. Okay, I'm in the root uh, directory, and I'm going to run this command npm install. Okay, so npm install. It looks for a package.json in the current directory, and it uh, it's going to install all of these packages from npm uh, and uh, with these different version numbers. Um, and I'm not going to get into it, but this is called uh, semantic versioning. Uh, so you, you see some symbols here with like the tilde, um, and uh, and that basically means um, you know um, get the get the like the latest version of this, but uh, but try not to go you know too far beyond this version uh, because you know if if you get too far beyond this version, it might make some you know breaking changes that might not work with the project. So anyway, I'm just specifying that you know you should get you know this version or you know something similar to it all right so I'm gonna go to my uh, um, terminal here and I'm gonna run npm install okay and if you get some warnings don't worry about that um, the errors are more serious but the warnings not not a big deal all right, it's going to take a couple of seconds, and we should be nearly done right now. Okay, all right, cool. So no errors, that is amazing. And so these are all of the dependencies that we just installed. So you can see right here, um, one of our dependencies was body parser. Okay, so body parser, it actually depends on other modules. So a body parser depends on bytes, depends on content type, and this module and that module and and anyway you kind of like build like a whole bunch of you know like a uh, you know, you depend uh, you download like dependencies for you know these modules and that modules and you know that's why npm is great it just takes care of all of the installations for you so you don't have to worry about it so after running npm install i get those modules installed locally and you might notice here that we have a node modules folder Okay, and that wasn't there before, but now that I've run npm install, it created this folder, and this is this is a whole bunch of code that other people wrote for us, and you know we don't have to you know write that. So you know, can you imagine you know writing all of this, all of these uh, code you know our, ourselves? I mean, it, it, it would be ridiculous. So that's why npm is great, and um, you know it's a fantastic resource. So uh, I'm going to start, you know, making commits to our project, and you should too. Um, so I'm going to uh, do that right now with a git init, okay? And uh, I'm going to create a new file called .git ignore. And um, whenever you, you know, working with full stack JavaScript projects, um, you should definitely uh, create this git ignore file so you never, you know, add and commit, you know, certain files and directories. In this case, we'll never have to commit our node modules directory. Um, that's just going to be, you know, a huge upload, so we don't need that. And then uh, if you're on a Mac, you might get this uh, invisible file here. Uh, there's no reason 
to keep that in our Git repository. So I'm going to say uh, ignore ds.store. So I'm going to save that. Go back to the terminal. Okay, git add period. Whoops, what is that? Okay. Okay, probably nothing. Okay, git commit. Okay. Uh, don't worry about that. There's just some warnings. Okay, I'll uh, say initial commit. Okay, there we go. Cool. So we got all of these commits and stuff like that. And uh, awesome. Okay, wait, what is. Mm, okay, uh, I think I screwed up with my git ignore file. I think it actually. Uh, yeah, it actually commit it my node modules. All right, so I'm going to take care of that. Anyway, uh, in the next video, because we're coming up on 10 minutes in this video here, I'm going to go over the file structure of, um, of uh, you know, uh, of this boilerplate code. Uh, I'll, I'll explain, you know, like what's happening. And then, uh, you know, hopefully pretty soon we'll start doing some coding. Okay, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.